First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Ghazi Al-Haji and Dr. Mudaffar Barzani, who both invited me to give this talk. I'm not delivering a classical lecture, but I am giving a few clinical notes I collected over my practice over about 50 years by now. The, the tachy and bradyarrhythmias in hypertension is not an issue by itself, but whether these arrhythmias are really association with hypertension, just an association, or it is a pathological correlation. The answer, we don't know yet. So, the commonest, as Dr. Rafid just said, the commonest arrhythmia in our practice is atrial fibrillation. It is about 4% of the population below the age of 60. And it is more than 8 to 12% among a population over the age of 65. So the people sitting here, possibly a lot of you have an incidence of atrial fibrillation, which might be short and paroxysmal. And it is about 40% of the total arrhythmias we are dealing with. It is a syndrome rather than an arrhythmia because it has a very wide correlation to many, many pathologies. Uh, so just before I go, just to show you few samples of atrial fibrillation, fast, accelerated, I have no pointer here, no pointer. The first one is an AF with complete heart block. The other one below is a very fast ventricular rate. One in the middle is paroxysmal. And one in here is the most dangerous type of atrial fibrillation, which is fatal, pre-excited in WW syndrome. So the pathophysiology of atrial fibrillation occurrence in hypertension, in spite of all the clinical and research data is not yet clear. Hypertension is common in AF patient with non-structural heart disease. At the same time, hypertension by itself is common in atrial fibrillation and the other way around. So what is the mechanism? The main mechanism is atrial stiffening and left atrial stretch and left atrial fibrosis. But the question is, is hypertension is the only cause of these pathologies? Not at all. There are so many things. Some of them we don't know yet. What is the cause of this left atrial fibrosis, which is the basic pathology of developing atrial fibrillation, commonly at the pulmonary vein entrance? And other hyp uh, sorry, once the hypertension occurred, it predisposes to AF, but even if blood pressure control improves later. That's a very strange statement. That means there is no definite correlation between hypertension and atrial fibrillation. Also, they state that the pre-hypertension stage that is below 130 over 80 level, people are also developing atrial fibrillation. Are they less than those who are classified as hypertension by definition? It is not yet known. Also, the clinical data has correlated that hypertension is a risk factor for AF. Hypertension is also a risk factor for AF recurrence after ablation therapy or drug therapy by itself. So controlling hypertension may reduce the incidence of atrial fibrillation. Effective hypertension management prolongs the AF free period that doesn't prevent the recurrence 100%, nothing like that. But it may prolong the AF free period for longer time. This is one of the hundreds of flow chart seen in the literature to show how the atrial fibrillation occurs in hypertension. LV thickness, stiffness, leading to LV, empty, and then atrial cardiomyopathy. This entity of atrial cardiomyopathy is not widely 
mentioned and accepted by the physician, but it is a type of cardiomyopathy limited to the atrium. And exactly at the entrance of the four pulmonary veins. So, in summary, this relation of AF and hypertension is not really, really very clear. It is uncertain whether recent evidence will lead to change in the target of hypertension control to prevent the AF recurrence and several pathogenic mechanisms underlying the higher risk of AF in hypertensive patients are still incompletely known. And that led to the concept of primary prevention measures. Is that is really effective? Primary prevention measures in hypertensive patients to prevent incidence of atrial fibrillation? A lot of things are going on now, but it's not yet very clear. So in conclusion, the correlation of AF with hypertension, can that be controlled by drugs? Will the incidence of atrial fibrillation reduced by certain group of antihypertensive treatment? Might be. ACE and ARBs should be in the top of the list of treating hypertensive patient with incident atrial fibrillation. Um, this is the man who actually invented the CHAD score, Grigory Lip, and he is still in active practice. He stated that AF is not the only arrhythmia, which is well known to us, but at, at SVT, regular narrow complex tachycardia, ventricular tachycardia, and atrial flutter, and even focal atrial tachycardia, all multifocal atrial tachycardia, all can occur in hypertensive patient, whether that is related to left atrial cardiomyopathy, it is not yet clear. Then we go to Brady and hypertension. This is another group of patients which we in practice commonly missed, and as we'll show a few cases I have seen. Hypertension is secondary, this is my question, the same as in tachycardia. Is this hypertension secondary to Brady? This is a case, has been treated for hypertension with a blood pressure of 190 over 70. Notice this wide pulse pressure with a sinus bradycardia, severe sick sinus disease, symptomatic. And this blood pressure was uncontrolled for more than a year. Nobody paid attention to this. And then when he was paced in AAI mode, that is only atrial pacing, the blood pressure normalized. This is entity is commonly missed in clinical practice. So please, when you diagnose hypertension, pay attention to sinus bradycardia, because that might be the underlying treatable pathology. This is another example of a patient with complete heart block and his blood pressure is 185 over 70. He has been treated by ACE inhibitors without noticing this bradycardia and when he was paced, his blood pressure normalized. Shall we call it curable hypertension? This is not a hypertension at all. And this, so this is the conclusion. When you treat the brady, the blood pressure will normalize. And permanent cardiac pacing is an adjunct to treatment of hypertensive heart disease with bradycardia. This is another problem, that when we see sinus bradycardia, is this is the only cause of hypertension? If we correct it, that bradycardia will really blood pressure will be normalized. This is not. 100%. You have to follow up your patient. Beta blocker therapy, as you know, is a very widely used in all branches of medicine, in hypertension, in tachycardias, whether sinus or atrial tachycardias, or even in ventricular tachycardias. But is it really, is beta blocker therapy, is the cause of this sinus bradycardia and hypertension? 
a lot of people taking high doses of beta blocker without developing bradycardia and a lot are developing bradycardia why is that that is because their sinus node function is different we don't know this but it appears when we expose the patient to long-term beta blocker therapy so we have to be careful not to rush and blame beta blocker as the mainly cause of the sinus of bradycardia um, and should be carefully assessed and permanent pacemaker may be considered if beta blocker therapy is necessary and the only drug which you can control your blood pressure with will that actually a class 2b indication for permanent pacemaker or class 1 indication i personally don't follow up this guideline I have to be really careful of putting a pacemaker on a hypertensive patient, well controlled with severe symptomatic sinus of bradycardia. I may look for another way to control their hypertension rather than follow up these guidelines. Because implanting a pacemaker in a patient is a long life problem. So you have to be really careful when you assess those patients. This is spelled pre-syncope and syncope are common in our clinical practice. And a lot of people refer them to hypertension. Be careful. There are so other curable causes of syncope, pre-syncope, and recurrent dizzy spells. Transient bradyarrhythmia should be looked carefully. As in this lady who has been one for imaging, and she fainted in there. She has been investigated for uh, brain disease Too or nice other enough. diseases. And this is another example. Old MI, hypertension, recurrent presyncope, has been treated for ischemic heart disease and hypertension without paying attention to the possible cause of Brady Tacky syndrome, which is a curable condition, AF and a pose. So be careful. Don't blame hypertension as a cause of these symptomatologies. And this is another example of paroxysmal AF, recurrent presyncope, and hypertension. Mr. Ammar, two minutes. Yes, just a few. And this is another example of bradyarrhythmia. And this is a bifascicular block degenerating into complete heart block. This is very common other entity. And this is another complete heart block, hypertension. After pacing, he is back to normal. Regarding the drug combination with antihypertensive, I only say modify your drug therapy. When you are giving calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and you are giving antiarrhythmic drug therapy, you have to modify your drug therapy. But with the advance in ablation therapy and high success rate, Drug therapy, anti-arrhythmic -anti drug therapy, is less widely used nowadays in hypertensive or non-hypertensive patients. Thank you.